afternoon. It's uh, now Thursday the 17th of October. <coughs> About half past five in the afternoon. And we left Salagu, as you know, on uh, Tuesday morning, well about midday Tuesday the 15th and um, yeah we, uh, we travelled up and we got to our next destination um, literally later on in the evening, literally just before dark and uh, we uh, scoped around with the binoculars at the night zone and um, found that it was, uh, it was clear apart from one, a couple of other anglers around the corner from here um, so uh, we knew the weather was going to close in on Tuesday evening, a little bit of possible chance of rain and we thought well we can either crash in the car park out of the way and probably risk getting rained on or we can uh, buy the bullet, just load up the, uh, the boat there uh, with the essentials and, um, and just get bivvied up for the night, you know, cheap B&B <laughs> rather than spending 50, 60, 70 euros on a B&B, which possibly would have been nice, would have been nice to have had a um, a nice bath and a shower and a, and a soft bed for the night and possibly a meal out, but we decided against it, Claire's idea, not mine, and um, yeah, uh, so we bivvied up <coughs> Tuesday night and we got everything set up yesterday, got the rods out about this time, um, last, this time yesterday, this time this last evening and we've been fishing now for about 24 hours. Um, it was a nice evening, um, <clears throat> a nice day yesterday. Um, um, but we come to bed, got to bed and it started to rain and it's literally the first time it's stopped raining now um, in the last half an hour. It's been, it's been a bit of a grey, miserable day. Sometimes struggle to even see the far bank over in that direction up there. Or stitched up uh, in a way in the fact that normally um, you can see the boy out here. This is, where is it? The red boy. That's only about 60 yards out, that is. Uh, and then see if we can get focus and there's a slalom course all the way up there you go probably pick them up all the way up the lake and I didn't know this <clears throat> and when I come to wound in my rod got snagged and went out there and all those boys are linked by a rope system double boys out there all on like a loom and then the uh, ropes the last rope goes to this red boy just uh, out there where it is and uh, so I'm fishing over the ropes with those three rods these rods are okay just out here fishing them almost tram line though literally 15 yard apart if that probably 10 yard apart because the other lad who's fishing around the corner there He's fishing two rods at 45 degrees straight out over there, sort of within about 60, 70 yards of me. And I'm right out, straight out, 90 degrees from the bank. So what he's doing is a little bit naughty, but, you know, and possibly should should wind in when somebody else turns up. But he, he's, he's, cut, he's restricting me a little bit, but I've still got, I've still got seven rods out, so I can't really complain too much. But he's going to go tomorrow. So um, that's good. So I'll probably be able to move back out to this open water here as well. Um, they've had a few fish, the place I fished before. So um, I know I know the score here. Um, and just uh, keep your fingers crossed. Just put enough enough bait out there between the seven rods. I suppose these three or four rods out here. They're all ranging from about 52 to sort of 50. 58, 59 feet of water, um, probably about two kilos and about two and a half gallons of uh, particle, two kilos of boilie, two and a half gallon of particle between the four of them. Not a massive amount really, remember from the boilies are 20 and 24 mil, so if you get any number of carp coming along there, should get a few pickups really. Um, and then the same with the bank of three over there, just more three sort of tighter groups, sort of uh, 
areas that uh, should get a bite quite quickly if any fish get the reds down. So yeah, um, we live in eight. Um, it did look good um, every now and again here today. The wind, the, the, the rain stopped and it looked like this and thought, here we go. Um, but if we have a, a drier night, um, fingers crossed, we might get a few. So come up here to get a few bites after Salagu was a bit of a ball breaker. Although, you know, I did really have a, a good result really, so I can't complain. So uh, fingers crossed, but the weather's going to be pretty much like this here now for the next sort of three days, four days over the weekend, but very patchy drizzle and patchy sun for the next week. By the way, we've extended. Well, we haven't extended yet. I've got to do that on the tunnel actually and uh, decide when we're coming back. So potentially it could be going back a week Saturday. So we'll look better not another nine days. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. But we've got decision tonight really and log on to Euro Tunnel and uh, make my mind up when we're going back. So yeah, there we go. Nice and peaceful though really, apart from two other guys fishing around the corner. It looks like we've got the whole of this lake to ourselves. Fantastic. So, until uh, later, I'm going to say good evening and catch you later. Look at those snags. Right then, good morning. What was it? Saturday? Don't know what date it is. Uh, oh, Saturday the 19th. Yeah. That's when we should have been going home today. Yeah. But from that extended week. So, Saturday the 19th, had this one earlier this morning. Two foot of water, obviously gone a bit too deep. Previous two nights fishing in 50 to 60, pulled up a little bit, and uh, this was resolved. Well, I lost another one as well in the snag. So, uh, yeah, finally, third night, got one. Lovely. Right, so press. The recorder. Okay, say goodbye to this little lamb. Fish. There you go then, so here we are, oh, sometime on a Saturday afternoon and uh, we were just, I was just messing about getting some feeder gear ready, got all the rods out sort of around um, sort of uh, about midday today, yeah, 
and uh, so the rods have only been out there about four, four or five hours, I suppose it was about five o'clock in the afternoon, something like that. And this one ripped off while I was messing about with the other gear and Claire, Claire grabbed the rod, knows what to do, lent into it, tighten the clutch. And I just happened to have the outboard running on the big boat. I said, come on, get in. So she didn't gingerly come in and it's a lovely day for it to go out on the boat to land a fish great little battle from the boat and there she is with a 24 and a half pound common fantastic caught on 24 muscle bottom bait with a yellow pop-up snowman style uh, out and about brilliant fun fantastic so uh, yeah that's uh, Claire's first experience from landing a carp from the boat well chuffed yeah I am brilliant fantastic what a lovely fish brilliant Give it a kiss. <laughs> so yeah, let's put it back. Lay it down in the sling again now then, Claire. And, uh, yeah. Beautiful clean mouth today. Have, let's lift the head up a little bit. No, nothing now, we've just caught it just at, oh, yeah. just caught it just in the corner of the mouth. It looks like a new penny. Don't look yeah. like I've seen a seen her looking a long time. And you're going to flip him over because yeah. I want to see him. Okay, yeah. Yeah, oh, a little yeah. bit of a blemish there, look. Just a little one, but... Yeah, a few little uh, scars from a long, long time ago in his life. Yeah, but otherwise, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Big tail. Yeah. Not, not, um, no food. No. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, chap. Yeah. Biggest fish I've ever caught. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Right, you're going to uh, take your socks off and, and let them go. Then you have to do that bit. <laughs> Can't let them let them go on the gravel. You've got to at least get in. All right. Okay. Yeah, let him go then. Okay. See you, mate. up really the last 24 hours it hasn't really done much got a little bit lazy on the on the filming um, it gets a little bit difficult mundane when when things aren't going your way um, and, you know, it's, it's, there's only so much you can talk about so but yeah so you know uh, this will be our fourth night in this on this lake um, obviously last night we had a couple of takes 33 pound mirror and, and lost one as I found out when I uh, played around with my echo sounder on live view a little bit more um, I was fishing over the top of a, of a probably a, a, a 30 foot tree um, so you know it's, it's strewn with braid out there so now I've had to split uh, four rods sort of either side of it there's no point fishing it so uh, you know, find some new spots um, but uh, the, the carp that Claire caught a little while ago, um, that came to the uh, the same rod that we caught the mirror on um, early this morning. Um, and a 24 mil muscle bottom bait with a yellow pop up, a muscle bottom bait that's been uh, soaked in CC more uh, muscle liquid. 
and, and then also dusted with muscle powder, green lit muscle powder, and it creates this lovely sticky mess. And then you can dip it in the muscle GM, GLM powder and roll it in your hand and create this nice soft paste around your, your up bait. So it smells amazing. So yeah, same spot. And uh, I think I'm sort of like fishing the silty spill from further down from where the stream runs in. It felt, you know, the, the, the lead plugs in. So I've got three rods on that area now. I've changed up the other the other rods last night were on the uh, bird food bait, um, uh, and typically the the one rod in between, which is on the mussel, that took again. So there you go. Uh, really wasting my time with. Uh, uh, with bird food baits here really next year not even going to bother um, although I've got a few kilo left over which I shall knock up just to use as sight in between the brown baits so uh, yeah same same bait but same same mark again can't believe there's any reason why the two either side of it wouldn't wouldn't produce a take they're only 10 yard either side of it so we're fishing quite a tight area there um, so yeah um, that was a nice bonus fish this afternoon and it's got that air about it at the minute and I know tomorrow we're going to have big winds, uh, 20-30 mile an hour winds, heavy rain and this is all like the calm before the storm but it looks good, it's a perfect autumn evening at the minute, it's so peaceful, we're the only ones on here and uh, yeah life is good at the minute just got to add one more big carp to the trip and if we can get a real big one from here then that'd be fantastic but if you don't just enjoy catching these, these wonderful virgin carp they almost just don't seem like they very rarely see angler's baits so yeah it's good it's a, it's a wonderful place so sit here with a tip in for, for uh, whatever comes along just got a nice pound and a half roach oid hybrid i think it's definitely not a roach anyway and it's definitely not an oid in, in the landing net at the minute Let's see if we can catch a few more of these past an hour this evening and then uh, see what this evening brings so hopefully see you later on all right there yeah. It look good. I might look, look good. Yeah. There we go. Look at that. That's a pretty fish. That is. 11:30 Saturday evening. And what's her name again? Tina. That I T called earlier. Tina's mate. Claire named her as Tina. And now we've caught Tina's mate. A pound heavier, at 25 and a half pound. And this is a beautiful fish. It's almost scale perfect and fin perfect as well. And that oh, one's right. Katrina. This is Katrina. So we've got <laughs> Tina, <laughs> Tina and Katrina. <laughs> Starting to sound, sound like a, an 80s pop band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. Absolutely chuffed to bits on that one. When you're catching them like this and you think, and you look at them and you think, has anybody else ever caught this fish? Throw the other side. You really just look at that and you think, it just reminds me of something I caught from the St. Lawrence River in America a long time ago, which definitely never saw a hook. Beautiful. Let's put it back. Thank you very much. Mwah. Okay. Off he goes, she. <laughs> Good morning. Sunday the 20th of October, about 8 in the morning. Uh, this one a couple of hours ago. And uh, wish I hadn't off really. I'm never going to retain a fish ever again. I think I've learnt my lesson. They're just uh, too lively. I uh, don't normally bother, but because it, it was such a nice fish, I thought I would. And uh, it's just not worth the hassle, so it's 
been a long time since I sacked a fish and I suddenly realise why. There we go. So this one's uh, just an ounce or so under 33 pound, I think it was. Um, third fish in about a 24 hour period. Nice fish, lovely fish. Severe attitude. And I think me and Claire have arranged, agreed to name this one Aaron. As a, or Twinkle Tits. <laughs> You'll know if you watch this young man. Because <laughs> it's full of attitude. He doesn't want to comply. Teenage. There we go. But a beautiful fish. Born a muscle, 24 mil muscle bottom bait. Uh, with a white pop up. Beautiful. What a bait, press play then. Oh, has that gone off a light here now, hasn't it? Wonderful beastie. Sunday afternoon, about one o'clock, something like that, one, two o'clock. And again, what a difference a couple of hours make. <gasps> Nothing else to report. Uh, Claire landed that nice common yesterday evening. Different day today though. God, it's been a uh, three seasons today. A little bit of a low in the weather. It's looking moody. Going to experience a few more showers up until around midnight. Then going to be not a bad day tomorrow. distance. Look at the snags we have to face here. <clears throat> I'd have run out here a couple of nights ago and lost it and uh, went back out there and used the live view on the echo sounder and realised I was fishing over a 30 foot tree. So uh, moved it, moved both rods way to the left and one to the right. But nothing since on those rods, so we'll let them, let them soak for another 24 hours. Nothing happens by sort of, uh, sort of uh, midday tomorrow, and I've got a bit of a, I've got a, a plan C. So, uh, fingers crossed, and get another couple of takes tonight. First, just put all his rods back out. Just sat enjoying a bit of the sun after all that rain yesterday. And bang, he was in. I was a bit late getting the camcorder, but uh, I believe he's got it in the net and is bringing it in. You've got another one. What have we got, babe? Twenty. Cool. Twenty. 
cool. Right. Is it afternoon? Yes. Good afternoon. It's Monday afternoon. Don't know what time it is. One or two o'clock. Yeah. And uh, just replaced rods in the last two hours. Uh, totally moved them around and uh, literally this rod's only been out about two hours and it's gone and uh, it's very stocky mirror and uh, I'm sure it's one I caught in the summer when I come here it might be not we'll check things and it was only about 27 pound then that's saying just over 29 so a proper little dumpy unit this is though It's a proper unit, couldn't quite believe it's gone £29. So they're all on there, everything's all moved over to uh, Snowman now, yellow Snowman, couple on white with the uh, Muscle Fish Mill and uh, all in around sort of 42 to 46 feet of water. Did have a take last night, but lost it. So uh, finally, nice to get one after the loss this morning, about two in the morning, something like that. Uh, got caught up on some lure anglers line, and then by the time I'd managed to pull from that, the fish was gone. So nice to get this one, a bit of a consolation prize absolutely crapping out the fish mill bait which is which is great news so he's obviously visited the spot again then come back for some more so uh, yeah good stuff hopefully you can follow that with a few more bye lumpy see you next time right Good afternoon, Monday afternoon, um, it's about half six now, but uh, just as we were cooking dinner, about half past five, um, one of the rods ripped away, the next rod along from that 29 and a quarter pound mirror had earlier on. Touch is done up, mega tight, didn't really take any line, just hit into it, held the ground, swap it again to the snags further out, and had a great fight and uh, resulted in this cracking mirror that's an absolute unit so uh, yeah here we go so we've had our sweet and sour now left this one languishing over the side of the boat in the net and here we go it is a proper unit press the button now for light boat in the mouth against mine. Okay, looking good in the viewfinder. Mm -hmm. Let's fish in this lake. Just a bit more for that one. Yeah. Okay, good shots there. There we go, what an absolute unit. Right, time to let her go. Thank you very much, Mr. Rumpy. Not hanging about. Yeah, a whip pressure. See ya, mate. All this action, it's still Monday, well, just early Monday, Monday evening. Three on the bounce. And this one's 26. And, uh, Lovely scaly fish. Lively. Lively. There you go. Just 26 pounds. That's a solid little unit. Beautiful. I'll show you one on the other side. You pretty fishy. Thank you very much. Hat trick. recording on yours? Yeah. Okay, here we go then. Ladies and gentlemen, a 
and Facebook friends. Recording on the mobile as well. Boom. <laughs> this thing is like a breeze block. <laughs> so thick. Look at that. We've had a, an amazing day today. This is fish number four. Four out of four. We lost one last night. I've been out there and moved moved the, uh, the, the marks around a little bit, shallowed up slightly, and since then it's been crazy, absolutely crazy. This thing is what we call a proper unit. Look at the width across this head, look at those shoulders. Getting that babe, does that look good? Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to stop recording. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Woo! There you go, you got that on the Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> Water afternoons fishing. Trip made, definitely now. <laughs> Look at that, it is a unit. It's so wide across. 24 male muscle bottom bait. Yeah, With a white pop-up snowman. Wow. Wow. Right. Minute, mate. <laughs> good? Yeah. Wow. Thank you very much. <clears throat> you a big bugger. <laughs> Excuse me, I'll back with this. Shoulders on there. That's such, it's only a short fish, but it's just so wide. It's such broad shoulders. Oh, yeah, that's better than your torch on. Look at the shoulders. <laughs> Alright. Okay, just a quick bit of video. It's Tuesday morning, about 7.15. White snowman pop up. Don't know how big this one is. The best ever than I think. I'll say it's about 1920. I'm not gonna take it out to sack it out uh, to, to weigh it. It's uh a bit tired. So we just thought to show you clean its mouth. Yeah, if they clean mouth, just uh my mouth cold, making it bleed just a bit. Lovely, thank you mate. Smallest one of the trip. <laughs> I think, first yeah. double. Sorry if you aren't here. But let it go. But it's a double that is, but the smallest of the trip anyway. Oh, it's wet. Rain has started. And he's in. Oh, I think it's just crossed over one of his other lines. Oh, I'll be back in a minute. Hopefully, oh, he's still pulling at it. Got it, I think. He's caught up on the other line, yeah. Right. Yeah, you're recording. Just a quick bit of recording. It's Tuesday morning, about 9:30, and this is definitely a double figure. Probably about 15, 16 pounds. Bit of an old bruise in this one. 
so I uh, had a bit of a nightmare, he kited hard and caught up one of the other lines, managed to land it and then untangle the line from the uh, hook. And then on the way in, I still picked it up with my propeller as well. Luckily, Claire was on hand to pick up the other rod and uh, basically had to pull me in because the brake was attached on the other rod to the propeller of the uh, outboard and I couldn't use it. There we go. Thank you very much, all the same. We'll let you straight go. Off it goes. So, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, one o'clock. Good afternoon. It's uh, Tuesday, um, just after one o'clock, as Claire's just said, and uh, just uh, wound in and just been to the shops to get a few supplies. We're going to do a couple more nights here. We're going to leave a little bit earlier, so we've got a nice relaxing couple of days, maybe give us a chance to do a little bit of exploring uh, and explore France without fishing for a, for a couple of days. So that'll be cool. So just come back, just got some bread and whatnot, just uh, wound in all the rods after quite a busy night. Um, as you saw the last fish was that common this morning. Um, did got have a take last night on one of the other rods. It was a bit of a rod knocker but that's all they can do because the clutches had done up so tight and when I brought it in the hook link had broke. It was just a different hook link I normally use, it was just some old snake skin which probably isn't that strong, probably only 50, uh, sort of £15 and so the usual £25 or £35. So it just uh, snapped off on the take, heavy leads, tight, tight, tight um, clutches and that's probably the weakest link. So just thought I'd run by you guys a little bit about more about what I'm doing, a little bit more technical side. So uh, I've been using this stuff, This I've been using this a lot this time, this stuff here called a dark mat, a super heavy braided hook link. It's really nice. Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot thicker than a normal braided hook link and doesn't tangle and I use that in about a 10 inch length with my uh, liner liner and, uh, and a size 2 Solo 101s. That's had a couple of fish on it now and that's still bee stings sharp that. No problem about sticking that out there and, a, and, a, and an AA split shot just to help put a bit of weight on the eye to pull it over when it um, before he takes off and hits the lead. So that's all pretty standard you've seen all that before low back system again as usual close there there you go nothing particularly magical about that rig all very standard but what we're doing with the hook baits is possibly a little bit different so we've got these hard hookers, there you go, so these are 24 millers and uh, they've been soaked in this firstly and, uh, and then I dust them in that, not, not that sorry, this is uh, green lit muscle powder and they're a little bit sticky so just to uh, make them a bit more doughy, I'm just dropping them in there giving that a good old dust around and that comes out like a, a bonbon if I can get it out. Come out, there you go, look at that. Give that a good good roll around then. And that's got like a two or three mil thick coating of green lip muscle liquid and powder on that. It smells absolutely divine, fresh fish. A beautiful fresh muscly shellfish smell. I think that's the reason we've been getting some really really instant bites. These, these hardened hook baits are very hard. I'm bringing this cordless drill with me is a lot more useful than just drilling my baits. I can tell you. For repairing Coleman's, screwing fish for Echo Sanders on the different boat, tightening up stuff. It's been a godsend. Hey? Okay. Mending Coleman's is what I said, yeah. And then. And this is his screw loose back. Yeah. 
And then this one I'm putting a white pop-up on. We've been ye yellow sticky old sticky pineapples have been pretty good. And they're still still a winner now. And uh, but I noticed that white's been producing pretty well as well. Producing better fish as well, funnily enough, and that's not the first time we've experienced that with white pop-ups. So we've got two on white and uh, two on yellow. They're all on snowman now. 24 mil snowman, obviously, 16 mil pop-up. I want to use these fox pellet pegs. They really do make sure nothing pulls them off. Not that there seems to be a problem with nuisance fish on this particular lake or grey fish. But there we go. I like a bit of distance. And that line the line, I'd bend that down a little bit. Sit like that. There you go. So that's my, one of my little edges that definitely works. The other one, which hasn't worked here, but did work at Salagu, and that's spicy squid gooed up hook baits. Getting a bit low on them. Did catch a couple of fish on on them here, but again, it's the natural muscle seems to be the, 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 the winner. So there we go. Not really much more to say. Everything is now the same. Got to try all the different scenarios and tactics, but again, it's my old faithfuls who've worked on the trick. So, on that note, I'm going to get the first set of four rods out and uh, see if we can't repeat anything close to what happened yesterday. Right, just a quick egg. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. Get out. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Just a quick egg. They're not all big. This one probably struggled to hit double figures. Nice to see. There's some uh, young uns in here too as well. Thank you, little un. Don't find your big mummy coming for me. Not for days. Incidentally, that was the first of the rods that I put out about an hour ago. And it's away already over quite a, a cover of bait as well, I might add. So, wow, um, they're, uh, they're on it. Get it back out. Didn't catch another. Good morning. <clears throat> it's uh, two o'clock, Wednesday morning. So the 22nd, I think, or 23rd. And uh, been a bit quiet since that small common. And on a Tuesday morning, it was a grim, wet, horrible day. We spent most of it in the bivvy shopping and getting wet first run and uh, gone out in the boat to meet with a very powerful fish there it is now sat in the landing net it's long and deep how big will it be stay tuned what, babes? Yeah, yeah you look. On. Yeah, you look good in the camera. Hang on. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, I think you're gonna have to stay there to get it in. <laughs> Recording, aren't we? Yes. Well, here we go. Wednesday, the twenty-third. It's now about two thirty in the morning. This rod ripped off at about quarter past one. Uh, Amazing battle out in the boat, went out past the marker, went out into well in excess of 100 feet of water. And what a battle! And we've got another good fish, and we certainly have. I can't quite believe it. 55 pounds, 4 ounces. And it's a beast. It really is a mega, mega fish. So, Bonus 
sleeves up for this one. Oh my. <laughs> right, you're going to fit in viewfinder in the camera. What does that look like? Yeah, that's good. You're completely in. If you want to press press start on the thing, we'll get a few, few like this thing and just about get it in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, one. <laughs> what a fish. What a session. What a trip. A mouth on him. What a catch. A night, night to go. Let's go and put him back. Put the photograph, video done. Just left him in the water for, uh, for uh, half an hour or so. And the landing net. Gonzalez. That's his nickname, Speedy. Right, there we go. Oh, right. Come on, settle down. I was going to slip this one right back until I went to lift it out. Oh, it's pretty, it's quite a pretty fish. You've got me in it. 31 and a half pounds. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit blase. What a beautiful fish. Wednesday morning, seven o'clock. Hadn't even uh, brewed the tea after that 30 pound mirror. And we've got this pristine little common. 
absolutely like a new penny probably around definitely not 20 pounds that'd be fish I'd say probably around about 16 pounds beautiful condition interesting common again very similar to the last one this one's got a bit of weight to it just over 24 pounds look at that beautiful Put all the rods back out again that have went in the night. I think it's fish number six. I can't honestly remember. There's five rods out. Uh, yeah, five rods out, so it's fish number six. Over 24 pounds, beautiful. Don't play the left hand rod, so it would work around uh, over the other three, and then around a the marker. Uh, these comments are absolutely wild. Uh, so I've got the motorboat, uh, just got all tucked up nice and dry after putting all the rods out. Got, got old smelly dry, had to put those back on and now I'm a little bit damp again. So I'm going to get this one back as quick as possible and uh, get back in the dry because it is absolutely amazing out here. But there's the fish around here, as you do. Beautiful thing. Thank you very much. Ah. I'm not putting them out again this time. I'm in. Good afternoon. It's Wednesday the 23rd of October, about uh, quarter to five in the afternoon. And uh, it's been a bit wet. <laughs> It really has, so uh, I'm a little, everything's a little bit of a blur. So since last night, since that uh, huge carp last night, I think we've had uh, six and drop one. Um, I thought attempt to bring this on this uh, left hand rod, sort of try play it from the bank, and I should have known better really. It's a little bit snaggy, and sure enough, uh, it snagged up a bit and uh, pulled you up. So I should have went out in a boat, but it was pissing down with rain. I was really, really tired. And, um, yeah, own fault. A little bit of bad angle in there, but you know, could have been the one. And it has been torrential ever since. And as you see, uh, we've been catching carp all the way through to the boat. 9:30 this morning, something like that. Um, and then I've got a little beach So we're on to our final sort of uh, 15 hours or so of fishing, 24 hours of fishing, well not even 24 hours of fishing. Um, booked the vets, booked a nice hotel about uh, an hour north of our location. And uh, so we're aiming to be away from here for about, uh, it'd be nice to be away for sort of uh, half past three in the van, driving away. Um, so that gives us plenty of time just to get things all tidied away in the correct manner and uh, leave this wonderful venue. Just a quick update, it's Wednesday the 23rd, about 6 in the evening, 6.30 and uh, finally the rain has stopped. Just imagine over 12 hours solid rain, it's not probably close to 20 hours of solid rain and as a result what was a big log sticking out the water there that was nearly totally out of the water um, it's now nearly disappeared so in the last uh, 36 hours the lake has rose I would say a minimum of two and a half feet that is a serious amount of uh, water for the lake of this size the wind's just switched as well, uh, turned around to a southwesterly or southeasterly as predicted 
and it looks like uh, we've been blessed with a dry evening when we was expecting the rain still to be coming down hard for the next uh, few hours up until midnight, two in the morning. So uh, you can sort of see over the horizon over there. towels and clothes. Use some pipe rock pods to dry out some clothes because uh, every time you get a carp obviously you get a little bit wet last time it was absolutely soaking so I'm pushing it down with rain so yeah just uh, dry them out whether I get them dried out or not I don't think so but never mind. So there we go. Nice to uh, enjoy a dry evening. And hopefully everything will get dried out, ready for our big pack up tomorrow. And there's Claire, look, suffering from a little bit of an earache. Bless her. So, uh, yeah, there we go. So, cheer over now. Seven and three quarter pound. We quick eat, hold them up. What a proper little unit that is. Beautiful, 27 and three quarter. And raw milk, that's all bottom bait for a white popper. Most of them have gone in the white popper actually. First time for a while that whites work through the yellow. So yeah, lovely. Good morning, Thursday the 24th of October. Uh, it's about 9.30 in the morning and uh, it was a dryish night but it started to hear drizzle again this morning and the water levels have just increased through the night and as you can see they've probably risen in six hours uh, in, in probably two days they've risen at least six foot this is a big lake um, so that's a lot of water. So we've got about about two foot to go before it's in the bivy doorway. So I reckon by later on today, um, this is going to be flooded out, but we're off anyway. So there we go. Um, I uh, dropped, lost another fish in a night. Just a drop run. So not had the best track record for the last sort of. Uh, Yeah, hoping to pack all this stuff up in the dry. It was a dry night. It's meant to be a nice dry day today. Um, not far from it. Packing most stuff away. Recently wet, damp. Anything else for wind the rods in, which won't be very long. So, 
Um, if I don't speak to you again, um, thanks for watching and maybe see you next year.